my name's Aaron. Welcome back to my channel. How are you? I'm fantastic and I'm doing really well. I am going to be doing my favorite 1 million fragrance and I have got them one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them lined up. And I'm also going to add in the bastard robot and then the Invictus. So I've just done it. Might as well chuck it in as well. And then we have, you know, which one I like. And I'll try and break it as I go along. When I do my favorite ones, not particularly breaking down notes. And I'm going to try to make them a little bit more human, less robotic Asperger perfumer brain. Okay, so I'm going to go through the notes of each of them and then we'll get to spraying. So we'll start off with the 1 million EDT. This was 2000 and eight that this came out there's a four perfumers working on it and the notes of this one are blood mandarin grapefruit and mint the middle notes are cinnamon spicy notes and rose and the base notes are amber leather wood notes and indian patchouli i can say something really quick interesting because i know you like these sort of interesting stories when i very first started seriously thinking about doing perfumery as a career i met a rep and we were just smelling little samples of stuff really interesting i still do that now but i have very limited time to do it so the two compounds which kind of really sort of set my hair on fire and made me feel quite alive inside my brain one was jasmine soundback what it did to my head i was like oh my god this is the most amazing thing i've ever smelled it was the quality of jasmine i'd smelled jasmine but generally like lower grade jasmine this was the first time i smelled a humor grade jasmine sandbag really like sparkling in my brain i remember it smelling jammy i can remember my brain sort of being like going a bit crazy the other compound and it's still my favorite one i think is rose absolute i really love it i kind of go through liters of the stuff i love it i did have a rose based fragrance but the name put people off this moment in time working on things to do with rose that's what i'm gonna say about it but i love rose rose is one of my most favorite things i would really implore you all my sort of viewers out there that if you get a chance to smell compounds rose absolutely is the one one i would implore you to smell because it does not smell how you think and i think it would change your mind about rose perfumes and also you'll be able to identify if a perfume contains rose rose they're saying this is in is is thick and red and viscous and it's so sensual and it's such a beautiful combat it's like i think one of my most favorite things i used to put it in everything and um to reel that back in a little, a little bit that was a bit excessive um, i'm very fortunate that i can use it i'm within onyx onyx extreme you know and i think i'm putting it in every single food so Anyways, they were saying roses in this. £54. I think they're all £54. I'm not going to go through the prices. They're £54 for 50 mil and £81 for 100 mil. It's got that thing. I remember it being everywhere. And I think the reason I don't like it is because it's kind of when it first came out, you could smell it everywhere. Unfortunately, I now associate this with uh, cigarettes, clubs, all that sort of stuff that goes with it. And not particularly the nicest. This is nice with the nutmeg and the sweetness and the way it's constructed is really great on oh, nice Super. All of that stuff, you can go and have a look at the review I did if you want to see a more formal sort of breakdown. It is quite rosy. I think the, the rosiness is to do with the, the, the mescal molecules and a rose molecule begin with G. Give a scone, I think it's that one. That one's used as more of a masculine rose in fragrances. Very nice, light, airy, substantial great amount of musk and an amazing musk called Z11P and that is an explosive amber so they're getting this amazing sort of wall of fragrance and I think it's really well constructed so the next one is the Her Firm this is 2020 oh and this is the one that was that was a tube rose note okay and this one is the same price salty tube rose I'm working with tube rose at the moment I think it's Ambroxin Cashmere Accord Leathery Opulence Solar Leather Accord Rock Rose Resin. I don't know what Rock Rose Resin is. It's atomizers. Yeah, I don't like this one at all. It's kind of tube rosy and tube rose. I'm going to be doing a lot of tube rose reviews sometime, maybe this year or next year. Got pretty much every single tube rose fragrance. Tube rose fragrance, like rose, when you make a accord, so it's like the rose accord or the tube rose accord, it's really smells like it. I think photorealistic sort of smells like it, but it's missing those trace compounds that give the tube rose and the rose life, sparkle, effervescence. Tube rose is really nice, but when it's just the cord, it's kind of not, not too good. I think this is really interesting for a man's fragrance that they're using tube rose. Yeah, and not my favorite at all. It smells like a tube rose. It's been constructed really well, but 
Country Bros can smell a bit banana-y. That's kind of giving me this sort of like fr extra sort of fruit molecules. I don't like this one at all. So we're going to do the Privé, which has been discontinued. I'd love to know why these were discontinued. I know a lot of people really like this one. So this was 2016. No, it's got cinnamon, blood mandarin, tobacco, myrrh, tonk bean and patchouli. Tonk bean's really light, lovely. So we go this side here. Yeah, I really don't like that. Uh, um, no, not at all. I think this one smells, it's the weakest one of all three. That may be why it's being discontinued if you are releasing really monstrous strong synthetic fragrances and you release one that's not as strong it's not going to do as well so maybe this is why this one got discontinued very nice though it's got that cinnamon apple pie that that accord it's really nice to use it's a combination of lots of different things which uh you know if you start working with aroma chemicals you start to understand how things are constructed it's really nice masculine dihydromersonal i'm going to smell of dihydromersonal but it's the flattest so i tend to do quite a lot of reviews at the same time and I try to between each review wipe them because I'm limited to sort of skin but that I'm going to take off I really don't like it but the Privé is the weakest I consider the weakest and for a range which is built upon sort of monstrous sort of like projection all the rest of it but I do like the smell that one sort of smells of clean apple pie very nice and then we've got the Elixir this is 2022 this one is slightly more expensive so for 50 minutes 75 pounds and for 100 ml it's 96 the top notes are apple Divana, middle notes are Dimus Grows, Cedar and I'll pronounce that. And the basements of vanilla absolute tonka bean and patchouli. Divana is a really interesting compound. It's thick and resinous. It's horrible to smell at 100 percent concentration. It can give like a boozy or rum feel when you sort of trace amounts. Thing. I, I love this one because this is high amounts of norlimbanol and lily of the valley raw materials, vanilla and ether model. Really high up, not whipping in the base, punching you in the face. This smells modern, clean, up to date, clean for all night. I love how this is composed. I think this is really excellent, actually. Unfortunately, Privé has disappeared, so I can't really smell that one. Original EDT, still going quite strong. I love this one. This is like really nice ambers in it, modern, up to date, aroma chemicals. It's got a sweet, clean feel to it. It is a wall of fragrance, so this is quite intense. So this is now going to take the place of the EDT as my favorite one. This one, the Elixir, I think smells the least youthful. The 1 million range sort of smells like quite youthful, youthful demographic, you know. I'd say sort of your first fragrance up to mid-20s. This one, I think it's, if you like sweet fragrances, I think it's suitable for all people. I think women can wear all of these as well. I don't think they're particularly really masculine. I think it's sort of metrosexual, unisex sort of fragrances. But this is sort of quite a monstrous sort of fragrance. Very clever because this amount of ethyl malt within a fragrance can smell quite sickening. But it smells sort of like clean, creamy, sweet, vibrant. Then we're going to do the One Million Lucky, which I just reviewed. I've got the notes again. This is plum, who was only notes grapefruit, bergamot, which is triggering people, hazelnut, honey, cedar, cashmere, woods, jasmine, orange blossom, amboid, patchouli, oak moss, and vertebrae. The Lucky is, is really vibrant, clean, sweet fruity but i do like the elixir these two are sort of on a par so the moment it's going to be that tie between the lucky and the elixir and the elixir being slightly bad then unfortunately we're gonna test the right world so there we have the phantom i hate the packaging i think it's horrible and i try not to be a bitch about packaging but not for me at all this is lavender lemon zest another lemon another lavender smoke earth notes apple patchouli vanilla another lavender so this is a lavender fragrance and vertiver i really don't want to spray this at all i tell you why i didn't like it because it's just it felt i think the story behind this is it was AI coming up with sort of a cause or notes or something and then perfumers had to put it together. It's kind of missing that sort of human intellect to sort of think about maybe if I lower this sort of down by a certain percent, maybe if I do this, maybe if I do that. And I think if AI is creating something, it's just it doesn't know, it's missing out what the human quality will smell does. And that's within our soul, that's within our we have developed as a as a human species to have smell of something hardwired into our brain. So I think when you have AI doing making accords and putting it together, I kind of don't know, but I'll do. Yeah, I really don't like it. It's got that horrible 
lavender with rhubarb acetate. It's just horrible. I really don't like it at all. So this one is a scrub, but I don't like it. It's my least favorite thing, I think. Okay. And then lastly, the Invictus. And the notes are this is so cheap. Grapefruit, absinthe, mint, lavender. They use lavender a lot. Cypress and patchouli. It's okay. It's, it's kind of all right. It smells sort of quite uh, immature. My favorites are going to be the Lucky and the One Million Elixir. And my most favorite one out of all of it is the One Million Elixir. I think it's really great. I love it on a personal note because it's using all the raw materials that I use and expensive raw materials and it's an expensive formulation. This isn't sort of uh, cheap. I really like it. I think I can thoroughly recommend it. I think I liked it when I tested it. My second one is the One Million Lucky because this reminds me of sort of how I construct fragrances. That's kind of what I haven't told you, but this I really like. I think it's very nice. And I think the two are very nice. So I hope you love that extra long review. Thumbs up and subscribe for more fascinating, interesting content. Lots of moving hands and lots of fragrance views. See you soon.